Hi, good afternoon, and welcome back to Art with Sara Lee. We are so glad you are here. Thank you for returning. Um, thank you for our new subscribers. Thank you. A shout out to Ellis. We saw your sunflowers. And a general all around, we hope that you guys are doing well out there. Today we're going to talk about shape, form, light, and we're going to draw a still life. We're going to take all those elements and make a still life. But I can't really do anything without my super duper trusty fantastic assistant, Miss Marlo. And Ta -da! How are you doing today? Good. Right on. Wow, you look a little different. Well, something new and sassy. What's going on there? I curled my hair. Awesome. How'd you do it? With um <laughs> rag rollers. With rag rollers? My grandmother used to curl my hair with rag rollers when I was a kiddo. Hmm. Awesome sauce. All right, are you ready to talk about shape? Maybe. All righty. What do you know about shape? Uh, there's many types of them. And awesome. Okay, you want to give me one? Square, oval, circle, triangle. Um, <laughs> All right, she's looking at my stack of shapes here. <laughs> so we'll start off with shapes so shapes are an area enclosed by a line that line could be made with paint watercolor drawing but it is an area in this case i've made shapes out of construction paper so we've got a triangle you're going to draw a triangle and can you draw big for the audience to see we have an oval we have a rectangle we have a circle and how are you doing there? And we've got a square. Now the interesting thing about shape is, hmm, let's see. What is the interesting thing about shape? The interesting thing. It's flat. It's flat. Flat. Shape encompasses an area drawn by your line and it's flat. Now what happens if we add dimension to a shape? Say, three dimensions. It turns into a cube if you use a square. Uh-oh, Sharpie. Ah! But do you know what, what is the word? Can you remember the word? It begins with an F. When we go from this, from shape, and we add dimension, we get form. We get form. And so a square becomes a cube. And a circle becomes a, a golf ball or a sphere. Um, we oh, don't have any spheres. So let's see. A, a triangle ball. becomes, it can become a cone. And a triangle can also become a pyramid. And a triangle can, be, can become a candy coin. Oh yeah, a candy corn. That's true. Do you like candy corns? Uh, yes, I do. All right. But it's not Halloween. Oh. But my birthday is new Halloween. Well, there you go. Well, maybe we'll have some candy corns then. Yay! So, and a rectangle would become a box. I do not, oh, a box. You know what, here we go. I will give you an example by my crayon, or crayon box. A box. It's really, it's really, this is true. Those are all of your crayons. All right. So, what do we need to see form? La 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 light. 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 Would you like light. to be light? Can you can you shine some light on the subject? How do you turn this thing on? Oh, that button right there. There you go. Oh, and it's flashy. So click it again, and then click it again. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. And so, could you be the sun over here? So what happens, I'm going to take some of these away, when we put light on the form? It becomes behind it. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm going to borrow it from you. It. So if the light is over here, what do we have now? Shadow. We've got shadow. And that is called a shadow. cast shadow. Okay, oh, don't draw yet. Okay. I'm going to turn this. Wow. And the cast shadow creates an incredible shape, right? 
shape because it's flat. Okay. And we also, and I think the camera can see this, I'm going to guess right here. So I'm guessing that this is the lightest side because the light is hitting this directly. So this is the brightest white you see right now. And I'm going to guess that this is the next lightest side because of where our light is. And this is the next lightest side. So it goes really light and then we'll call this a medium and then we'll call this a dark. And then we've got our cast shadow. And those are the things that you need to know about how to make a still life. And that's what we're going to move to next. Okay? Thanks. Okay, we are back and we've got the supplies that we need to begin a still life. And we've got colored pencils and we have crayons. Most importantly, we've got just a regular pencil. We have drawing paper, or you can use printer paper, any type of paper you've got. And then, um, oh, you know what? Most important, I forgot. We have a source of light. We have our flashlight. And we have three items to put in our still life. And in our case, I picked something bright colored. So we've got a lemon. And what, what shape does this look like? Circle. And even more so than a circle, what does it look like? Maybe uh, if it was a oval. An oval. We've got, yeah, and then uh, that's our lemon, and then we've got an apple. And what is the apple like? Uh, a circle. Yeah, a circle or a sphere. And then, this is fun, we have a mug. And if you look at the mug straight on, it's kind of a box. <laughs> or it gives you that uh, kind of um, square. Yeah, but also, yeah. I think it's, I'm remembering something from school, uh, I don't know. Well, what happens when you take um, a rectangle and you give it curved sides? What is that called? And there's a circle, look at that circle on the top, and a circle on the bottom. This is called a... Can. Well, it's close to a can. What is it's? You know what? It shares. It's similar to a can, uh, in that it shares the name of that shape. What's the shape of a can, or what is the form of a can? I can't. A cylinder. It's a cylinder. It's a cylinder. This forms a yeah. cylinder. Um, when you're when you're looking at it straight on, though, you can reduce it to to a square. I mean, yeah, to a square. Yeah, or to a cube if you'd like. Um, We'll get to that in just a second. But I do have things that are colorful, super fun and colorful. And this one's really fun because it looks like Cookie Monster. All right, and I think I got all of our supplies. Are you ready to begin? Yes, I am. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, we are back. And we have set up our apple and our cup and our lemon. Now, as you can see, this is a general, we're filming in my studio and it's pretty general lighting. And you can see the cast shadow that is here. We're going to add our own cast shadow. We're going to turn that on. Wow, check it. So you've got the cast shadow now of the apple and the lemon. And the other thing about having a light source, and I'm just using a flashlight right now, but you have a light side of the apple with a highlight, and you also have a dark side. I'm going to lower the light a little bit so we kind of increase that. You've got a light side of the apple and a dark side of the apple. You have a light side of the cup, and you can even see the cast shadow from the apple on the cup, and you have a dark side. You have a light side of the lemon and a dark side. Now, for this still life, we are going to simplify. I'm not really worried about Cookie's face. I'm not really worried about this cast shadow right now. I'm really only going to focus on um, getting the shape of each of the items in our still life, and understanding that there's a light side to it, a dark side, and a cast shadow. Okay? I will write all of these terms down in the description of the video um, on YouTube for everybody. So let's look at these for a second. So again, we've got this apple, and it's not totally round. I mean, it's not like perfectly round, like a perfect sphere, like this golf ball but it relates to this golf ball, yes, in the sense that it is round. And we've got our lemon here that relates to our oval. I'm gonna pull this out. Definitely, it relates to the oval. 
okay? We almost have like a little triangle action going on back here. And then we've got this cup. And this relates to two shapes, actually, to a cube in the sense of its sides, its, its verticalness. And then also, I mean, kind of, you can see the top of a sphere up there. Let me get that, our circle from over here. There we go. So you can see that sphere, okay, or that circle shape on top. This right here. All right. So I'm going to put the flashlight down for a minute. Man, Miss Marlo, Miss Marlo's going to town. Oh my gosh. That is fantastic, buddy. And I'm just going to, I kind of like to draw in the air and get my shape. And so I'm going to put that. And I'm just, I'm just making a circle right now. And I'm also seeing where it sits in relation to the Cookie Monster mug. Okay, and I see a little bit of space in here. So I'm going to draw a side of that. I also see that this is curved, much like a circle. So we're going to do that there. I can also see that this apple, when I run a line across, the apple is kind of smaller than the Cookie Monster mug. So I know that this circle up here is going to come above the apple. I'm just going to put that in really general right now. I'm not worried about specific stuff. And then put the other side of that mug in the Cookie Monster mug. We're going to move the golf ball. And then I also see that the lemon sits in front. So I'm going to draw an oval. Now, for all of you guys at home, and some of you guys may be like, oh my gosh, how in the world am I going to do this? I am... I am super young and I might not really get all of this. You know what you can do? You can take your Crayolas and you can do the same thing. You can say, you know what? This kind of looks like a box. Kind of looks like a box, but I've got some rounded edges. And I know that there's a circle up here. And this is an oval. You can draw that oval with your, with your crayon. And I know that this is an apple. And we're going to draw that circle over there. Alrighty. So we've really simplified it. Okay. I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to draw one more for those of us who might be a little bit bigger. I'm going to go and redraw that mug. There's this little space. Now, here's the interesting part too. I am sitting where I'm sitting. My I am looking down on the still life. So that's how come I can see these curves. And then we got that. Okay. And when I say I'm looking down, you can really tell I'm looking down right now because I've got this, this circle that's been tilted. Watch this. So we go like this. And if we tilt that circle, it's in perspective and it almost becomes this is almost an oval when you draw it so we're I, you can tell I'm looking down because I can see into the cup okay I'm gonna add that handle on and I know that that handle falls in this space right here okay and I can see it right over there it peeks out and it doesn't ever touch the apple but it comes right up to it and then the top of the handle. Now I'm going to go to the back. And it gets thin right here. And what happens? We lose it on that side, but we gain it on the inside. Okay? So we kind of have that. Again, keeping it really simple. You could even think of that as what? That's half an oval right there. Okay. We're going to go back to the lemon. And we're going to add that triangle shape on the end there. And then I'm going to erase the tip of it. I'm going to curve that over. And I got my lemon. Super simple. Okay. We're going to go back to the apple. Now the apple is not a complete circle. It's kind of elongated. It's more circular up top. Up here. And then it falls. It gets narrower. 
So I'm just going to come in here and look at that, kind of draw in the air to get that shape. Mama, how do you like it? Yeah! And then the master over here is going at it. Love it. I'm going to draw my stem. And notice, this, some, you might think like, oh wow, I'm going to draw the stem way up here, but does it fall up here? No, the stem falls pretty. Like if we were to see this as a whole circle, the stem is in the upper half of that. So we're going to find where that stem is. I'm like, well, hmm, how can I figure that out? When I'm looking at it and I see it, the stem falls in line with the bottom. Of, I can barely see the bottom of the handle over there. So I'm going to use that as a measurement. I'm going to come across and I'm going to put my stem in. Okay. And I know that this is a little, we're going to shape that apple up a bit there. Okay. And now I've got a stem in there. And now when I'm looking at this, I can already see in here is much darker. This blue is darker than this blue. You can see here, there's uh, what we call um, point of tangency, where because it's a rounded object, our light, here's the lighter side and here's the darker side. So we could shade that. We also see that here. It's much lighter on top and it's darker down here. And when I mean lighter, I mean you can even see the highlights of the lights that are above us. Now, when I take my flashlight, I'm going to, oh, Fancy, fancy, let's see. And I'm gonna take that flashlight and let's see if we can balance our flashlight right here on our cube and give us a, yeah! Check that out. We definitely have a light side and a dark side. And we have a light side of the cup. We even have highlights. Those are called highlights. Those really, what we call the hot spot, almost white. Now, the lemon is in the cast shadow. He is not getting the light because the apple is standing in front of him. So we're just going to leave him alone right now. But let's get this apple. So if we come across here, you can see how this is a little bit darker. And we've got this kind of, in fact, I'm going to draw a dotted line to show you. Dotted line kind of goes back here. And so we can fill this in and you can fill this in with pencil right now and go back over it with a Crayola or go back over it with your colored pencil. And it's even darker in here. So we're going to darken that up. We're going to come over here and we see that there's a light spot through here. Okay. And so let's just draw a dotted line to give us an idea. We know that the reason this is dark through here is because again the apple is sitting and blocking the light from Cookie's face. I'm not going to draw Cookie's face right now because I'm really not worried about Cookie's face. But I am, are you drawing Cookie's face? I love it. But I am going to kind of fill this in, shade this in with my pencil. I'm going to follow those dotted lines that I saw or that I made rather. And then we know that this is super dark up here. Look how darker that is compared to this or compared to that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to shade that in with my pencil. Now here's an interesting thing. We've got this dark in here and we have this dark here. But look at this rim. That is much lighter. So I'm going to go back with my eraser and just kind of erase in that light. And then I'm going to draw that oval shape from the top of the cup a little bit better. And then I'm going to draw the shape from the outside of the cup so we kind of get that a little bit better. I'm going to neaten this up just a bit. All right. And then I realized when I look at this dark here, I can look at the dark at the inside of the handle. That handle doesn't get any of the light either. So we're going to darken that up. Alrighty. And then I'm going to come over to the lemon. Um, 
we're going to put a little tiny bit of shadow. And now I'm going to look at my cast shadow. And it comes right, and it breaks right about there. And it comes right over that lemon. So then all of this is in shadow. Cast shadow. And guys, I'm trying to do this in a super simple manner. Okay? There is much more studying to this when you get to the formalities of a still life. Uh, but I am trying to approach this for all different types of ages. So um, we, are, we haven't talked about value or, or, or some other things. So really just trying to keep this as simple as possible and then we can build on these ideas. You know, there is a very interesting cast shadow right here. We're going to put that in of that lemon. That's very, very good. Yours is very, very good. Oh my gosh, girlfriend. I don't really think that. Well, I think so. We're going to put that cast shadow in. And then there's a tiny cast shadow over here that's going in the other direction because of the general lighting. And now what you can do is you can either take your Crayolas or your colored pencil. I think I'm going to use Crayola. And you can go over this. I'm going to go over the whole apple and where I've colored in pencil is going to just naturally be a little bit darker. But what it does is it tells me, oh, I could, and we talked about this last week when, when, when you're making line and you push down and it's a little bit harder. You can press down and so you make that color a little bit darker. So we definitely have a light side of the apple and a dark side of the apple. And we also know that that's going to come up over here. There we go. And I'm going to take a colored pencil and put in my, my stem right here. Got a nice piece of highlight on that stem. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up some of this green. We're going to put that because that's around the stem. And I'm going to add some yellow to that. So, and this is all with Crayola. Oh, and we've got some yellow on this side of the apple, so I can put that in. And you know what? Maybe that apple needs another... We need to put in a little more red there. Yeah. See what happens. I see you looking at me. What are you drawing? What are you drawing? Yeah. Are you, I love it! Okay. And you guys know this. I know all the students that I've been working with know this. Like when you have to get that orangey color, what do you add to what? You add a little bit of yellow to a little bit of red. Alrighty. And then I'm going to go over it one more time. Now, we talked about something else when we talked about line. Line can add weight. So I am going to go around the bottom of this apple where it's sitting and I'm going to put in a darker line with my Crayola and that signifies the weight. It's like, wow, that apple is sitting there. And notice too, you can go back in with your pencil. There's a, it gets even darker. There's like a tiny, another shadow. There we go, and we're going to darken this up a bit. Alrighty, so there's my apple. So if I want to go back, hey guys, for, for all of you guys who um, are working with just your general shapes, you can do the same thing here. You can recognize that we've got some green up here and put in your green. You can recognize that you've got half of that shape that is hit with the light, so you're only going to cover color in half of it. You can add a little yellow to that. And a little yellow over here. And then we're going to come over here. And that. I color this one. So it doesn't have to be super complicated. And I'm just pressing down to make this blue go a little bit 
And then I'm going to make sure I get that outline, that little highlight. Let's see. Oh, we're going to draw in that. And this, the way I'm getting my darks, I'm just pressing down harder. So I'm going to lightly press through here, and then I'm going to press down harder over here. We're going to make that a bold area. And then we're going to take the lemon and color the lemon. Oh my gosh, Mama, that's so pretty. And then what can we do? Oh, you know what? We have a darker color. Oh my gosh, I just hit the light source. I just moved the sun. Okay, I'm going to take this blue and we'll do the cast shadow with this. We're going to get that cast shadow. And then we've got this darker one right here. And then I'm going to color all of this in. And also with this, we're going to add a little weight to that cup. Oh, and we need a, oh, you know what? I need a stem, but I don't have any brown right now, a crayon. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add, I'm going to take my green. And then I'm going to go over it with my red. And what do I get? Oh, I get a little bit of brown. Alrighty. So we have that type of still life. And we've got this one that I can keep working on. So let's see what you got there. Can we see yours? Can you show us again? Oh, Miss Marlowe. That is exceptional. I love it. I think it is. So guys, um, again, really just super simple. We identified our shapes. We figured out what they turn into when they go into form. We talked about needing a light source. And then we selected just three very simple elements to put in our still life. You could do this with watercolor. You could paint these with acrylics. Um, we used crayons and we used uh, colored pencil. So we kind of can, you could continue and you could finish it out in pencil if you'd like and you wouldn't have to add any color to it. But it really just gives you a very simple way of setting up a still life and understanding how light plays on form. Um, yeah. And do you have anything else? Is there anything else we need to tell them? Oh man, you know what we need to tell them? What about some major phenomenal still lifes in, in the history of painting? I would definitely recommend Cezanne. I know that Van Gogh did beautiful flowers in vases. Um, and I will add to that list on our YouTube channel. What do you say? Okay. okay, you know what we're going to have to do? I wonder, can we do this? We're going to turn. You want to turn and look up at the camera? Say turn and look up at the camera. Bye! Bye.